Okay, so today we have a Studer S20 cylindrical grinder. Uh, this is a full function, uh, has a rapid approach, it has a spark out, it has uh, longitudinal grinding, plunge grinding, it has uh, OD grinding and ID grinding, and a wheel head that could be swiveled on uh, different types of angles. We have a rapid approach, a manual rapid approach. Oh. First, we have to start the hydraulics. And we can start our grinding wheel. Our wheel slide it can be moved in and out to adjust force adjustment where you want it. Also, it can be swiveled. This has to be moved out of the way. It can be swiveled to 30 degrees, I'm not exactly sure, I have to check our quote, and 90 degrees and one other setting. Obviously you want to pull this back and push this in when you're going to do your ID grinding. Good idea to take the tailstock off. We're going to leave it like that for now. So you have your in and out here. In the manual mode or setup mode, you want to loosen your clutch here, loosen the dial on your wheel, bring your wheel in, bring your slide in until you're right up against, almost up against your part, and then use your hand wheel here to physically come down and touch off the workpiece. Once you touch off the workpiece, then you want to bring it down to the proper size. Uh, then you're going to set this dial here at zero. You're going to set, you've got uh, two scale rings on here on this hand wheel to set an inner and an outer. One is for your retraction amount or stock removal amount and one is for when your coarse feed turns to your fine feed. And this is a little clutch here. You want to make sure you have that tight. This is on zero. This is tight. So now when I put this thing into automatic, my wheel slide is going to automatically go backwards. My hand wheel is going to come off the workpiece that I just ground by hand, the zero, and back up uh, 20 thousandths just to give me uh, stock removal and a little safety. So if we were only taking a few thousandths off, this would be fine. So when we're ready to go into grinding, then we put it in automatic. We've got our wheel on. Now we press the cycle start button and we come in. Our table starts to move. Our work head comes on. Now the work head is controlled by the speed here. The table speed is controlled with this knob up here. So each time we reverse, we feed. I can slow this down or speed it up. Actually, I need to tighten that down. But that's the left and right. You have your table uh, taper adjustment here. So each time we feed, we hit the reversal, we feed. So we can work our way down to zero just by doing this. Depending what you have put in for uh, empty passes when you reach zero, uh, that's at that point when it hits one of these reversals, the left one or the right one, it'll kick out. If you want to stop your cycle for any reason, you can hit this uh, stop button. You can uh, make some adjustment if you wanted to and then start again. Or you can abort, which will back your wheel back up to your stock removal and send the head back and shut the work head off. All right, so now we have it set up for a, a plunge grinding mode. Uh, and I've got my stops locked down where they need to be. So I should just have to press the cycle start button. We're going to come forward. We're going to start the work head. We're going to start the feed. So we're in, we're feeding. That's that feed there. Then it stops, then we go into the fine feed. We get to zero.
to the spark out and the retraction. So that's the plunge grind. You could also do a plunge with oscillation. So this time now we have the table going back and forth, but a continuous infeed. This would be normally if you have a diameter that's not as wide as your wheel or less than the width of your wheel, uh, you just oscillate across your part as you plunge grind. And when we get down to zero, it kicks out. Then you have your longitudinal grinding where we're going to feed only each time it reverses. So again, uh, we bring it in. Each time we reverse, we feed. Right now we're feeding on both sides of the part, left and right. And when this gets down to zero, it's going to do as many empty passes as you have programmed it for it to do. In this case, I have two in there, so it should go back and forth and back and forth and always kick out at one of the stops, not in the middle. Still working its way down to zero in the fine feed. And once the feed stops, then we're going to do two passes there and back, and it kicks out on one of the stops. Then you also have uh, two other selections where you only feed on the right side or you only feed on the left side. So this side, the tailstock side, it doesn't feed. The headstock side, it does. The tailstock side, it doesn't. The headstock side, it feeds. Okay, when we send it back. So you also have uh, your ID grinding spindle here. You could take this tailstock off for now. Put this back in manual, put the head back, I'm just going to uh, shut it off, loosen that, your wheel head comes back out of the way, it can also be swiveled in different directions in case I haven't shown you that. This would want to be out of your way, you could put this at a 30 degree angle. But for ID grinding, we want to uh, pull this out of the way and push this forward. Then you have to um, bring this forward and then you have to lock it forward. There's a special setting here for ID grinding where you lock that forward. Now it won't go back any longer. Now I want to shut this off and I want to go over to the other side of my control button. This is for internal grinding, this is for external grinding. So when I go here, my hydraulics are going to start again, holding this wheel slide forward, but it will not allow it to go back. Then we start the ID spindle. And if I start my cycle, uh, I got to go to automatic. And of course you'd have to bring this much further forward with the hand wheel to get your spindle lined up with your bore. And you want to have a chuck or a collet or a face plate, or not a center in there, but you get the idea. That's the Studer S20 ID OD grinder. Thank you very much.